I follow the Cezanne brand really closely and I love what they're doing. The other day, I checked a new collection and I came across this bag. It's gorgeous, but a little bit pricey. You know me by now. When I want something, I just try to make it. So, if you don't want to spend 290 euros on a bag, then follow this tutorial. I start by preparing all the pieces of my pattern on the fabric, lining, and interfacing. Here, with the main fabric, I cut the pieces A, B, C, and D. You can pause the video to write down all the measurements for each piece. For the lining, we will need the pieces A, B, D, E, F, and G. For the interfacing, H, I, J, and D. To have the same design as the season bag, I'm using a different fabric for embellishment. I also prepare my pattern for this fabric and the corresponding pieces are K, L, M and N as shown here. Let's look closely at the L piece. To design this pattern piece, I folded a piece of paper in half. I drew a perpendicular line 7 cm from the folded edge. Then I measure 5 cm from the height and I trace a perpendicular line. I close the rectangle and from the right side to this point, the line is 4 cm. So I trace the line and once that's done, I cut the rectangle shape. After that, I fold in half lengthwise by the shorter rectangle. It helps me to find the middle. From here, I measure 1.5 cm on each side to have 3 cm in height. Then I draw a curved line like this. I fold back my pattern and cut by the curve. And here you have your L pattern. Now, I'm preparing the pattern pieces K, L, M and N on this fabric for the cutting process. Then, cut, cut, cut! I also prepare these pieces with the interfacing. Here, I'm preparing the pieces O and P for the top zip. Let's start with the straps. I took my fabric and placed it the wrong side down and the interfacing on top like this. The interfacing should be placed 1 cm from the top and side edges. Then I folded the longest edges by 1 cm and iron as shown here. Once I finished ironing the sides, I folded in half lengthwise and ironed again. I did this for both chops. Once that's done, I took the pieces A and B with their corresponding pieces and ironed them. The interfacing should be placed 1 cm from the edges. Then I also ironed the interfacing with the piece D. As the piece D is the bottom of the bag, I prepared the interfacing the same size as D. I ironed A and B 1 cm from the top edge on Sometimes, to make sure, I check with my measuring tape that is 1 cm from the edge. I did the same process for the lining pieces A and B. Now I'm preparing the zipped pouch for the interior of the bag. I iron all sides of the piece E and F 1 cm from the edge twice.
Then I took the G pieces and I ironed the shorter edges by one centimeter, then folded in half and ironed again. After that, I'm ironing the pieces K, L, M and N with the matching interfacing fabric. Once that's done, I took the piece K, folded and ironed one centimeter from the edge. Here I'm using a cotton fabric while ironing to avoid burning my fabric. Then I fold in half lengthwise and iron. Next, I'm doing the same process with the end pieces. Then I took the end pieces and fold the shorter edges by one centimeter and ironed. After, I fold it in half lengthwise and ironed again. Here, I fold the shorter sides of P like this and iron. Then, I fold it in half as shown here and iron again. After that, do the same process with the O piece, but instead of folding the shorter sides, it's the longest sides. Here are the G pieces. I open the middle fold and fold the fabric right sides together. I pin them so I can sew the shorter edges here. Now, I cut the excess fabric and turn it the right way around. Make sure to push the corners really well and gently. I did the same thing with the second G piece. Once that's done, I took the pieces E and F with a zip. I placed the end of the zip inside the G piece like this making sure that it's nicely placed and pinned. Then I place the F piece on top like this to mark on the zip where it ends. I cut the zip where I just marked. I chip the end of the zip like this to make it easier for me as I will put that end inside of the second G piece. Once again, when it's nicely placed inside, I pinned it. Now I can sew the sides as shown here. Next, place F on top of the zip like this, but on the bottom side and pin it. Then I put E on top of the zip on the upper side. Now I will top stitch on both sides of the zip with the zipper foot. Here I place A right sides together and I pin the shorter sides to sew. I do the same thing for B and for the lining A and B.
Now, let's sew that. Once I finished with the sewing, I ironed the seams open like I'm showing you here. If you want to make it easier, you can mark where the corners of D will be on A and B with notches. As you can see here, I'm placing D on top of A by the seam and clip where the corner is. Then I continue to move both fabrics to the next corner and clip the next corner mark. Do this all around, but you don't need to mark by the seam as the seam is already a mark. A little advice here. If you start by marking the longest side first from the seam, then do the same process with the lining fabrics because otherwise the notches won't correspond when you will assemble the main fabric with the lining. Another technique that you can use for this process is to report the measurements of D directly without using the D piece. For example, the longest side is 25 cm and the shorter side is 16 cm. So, from the seam, measure 25 cm and clip. Then, measure 16 cm and clip. And finally, measure 25 cm from that clip and do the last notch. Do the same thing on the lining fabric of pieces A and B. Here, I turn the lining B piece the right way around. I take one of the 25 cm side and place my zip pouch in the middle. Then, I pin the sides and I will do a top stitch all around. I turn the main fabric A piece the right way around and the lining A piece to the wrong side. I make sure the seams are aligned and slide the lining inside of the main fabric. I pin the upper parts together and top stitch all around. Now, I take the piece B and slide it inside A by making sure the seams are aligned once again. The raw edges in the bottom should be aligned. Then, I check the measurements where I mark the notches. I will need the 25 cm sides to place the straps. Once I've found the 25 cm side, I place pins on each side to make it easier for me. After that, I measure 4 cm on each side and place pins as well. This is where we are going to place the straps later. Next, I place the straps like this. And I mark on the straps with the pin where the A piece upper part is. I did this on each side and on both straps. I'm going to top stitch on both sides in between those marks. Now I'm going to start by preparing the accessory embellishments. I take two L pieces Place them right sides together and pin the sides as shown here. Then I do the same thing with the two other ones and sew the pinned sides. Mm -hmm. 
Once that's done, I cut the excess fabric and cut some notches by the curved edges. After that, I turn them inside out. Fold by approximately 1 cm the raw edges and iron the L pieces. Here I have 110 cm cotton webbing, the two L pieces and the two snap hooks. I'm placing one end of the straps inside the L piece like this. Push it until the beginning of the curvy shape. Then I take the snap hook and slide it inside the L piece, fold it in half and pin to secure it. Here you can sew a square shape and an X to extra secure it. I did the same thing on the other end. This is the end piece. I fold it right sides together to sew the sides. Cut the excess fabric and turn it the right way around. Now I'm going to figure out where to place the D rings. For that, I need the side start measurement of 16 centimeters. So here. Then I measure the middle and mark it with a pin. From the upper part of A, I measure 2 cm and fold here to mark underneath. This is where we are going to sew the end piece with a D-ring. For that, I will sew that end, then place end like this around the ring and sew the edge. I did this on both sides and both rings. Once that's done, I place the straps on top of A and B like this by the marks and pin it. Turn it now to see the side. I open the end piece that we ironed earlier. I will place the edge on the upper part of A and the fold crease on the shorter side should match with the side of the straps. I will sew it underneath the straps. I pin the whole edge and sew 1 cm from the edge. I do this on both sides. After finishing the sewing, I fold back by the crease and around the upper part of A as shown here. I pin to secure it and I pin the straps as well, so after sewing the bias tape, I can sew the straps. So now, sew, sew, sew! what it should look like. Now let's do the top straps. I fold like this to find the middle and do the same thing with the K piece. Then I fold the strap in half lengthwise by the middle part. I wrap around K like this and pin to secure it. After that, I do a top stitch at the edge. Mm -hmm. 
Now it's time for me to assemble the bottom part. I turn the bag inside out and start pinning by the seam. Here, while I'm pinning, I'm making sure that the corners are matching with the notches. Then sew around. I did the same thing with the lining. Don't forget, pin the right sides together. Then I iron the seams. Once it's nicely ironed, I turn the line in on the wrong side and place it inside the bag like this. I make sure that the zip pouch is in the middle by the side where I place the straps. Then I pin the upper parts together and top stitch. I take the whole piece and fold right sides together like this. I pin the shorter sides and I will sew here. Now I'm cutting the excess fabric on the sides and turn it inside out. I will place the zip inside the O piece like this. As it doesn't fit completely, I'm cutting where it's exceeding. Then I double check if it's okay. After that, I take the zip and place P on one end, then I pin to secure it. I do the same thing on the other side. I check once again if it fits. Now I can top stitch the edges. Once that's done, I place the zip inside P and pinned like this. I do the same thing on the other side and top stitch. Here I placed pins 3 cm away from the sides, this is where I will put the top zip. So I pin the zip between these two pins. I pin both sides and then I will top stitch by following the same stitch line. I have my season bag made by myself for myself. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please like, subscribe and share this video to support my channel. See you next week. Bye bye.